The story begins with a man named Nikki. He was eating at a hotel when a girl comes and sits next to him. She tells Nikki that the old man in front of her is bothering me. I want to get rid of him. Since I have come, he is thinking that I am alone. He is bothering me thinking that I am alone. She also told Nikki that you will pretend to be my friend for a while, please, so that he feels that I am with you and he does not bother me. After hearing this, Nikki agrees, but that girl, whose name was Jess, starts looking at him in a strange way. Jess asks, are you a serial killer who is staring at me like this? Nikki says that I can't say anything. This is the perception of the other person, that what kind of person he thinks of me and I become like that. Now they kept talking like this for a long time. They become friends. Then they went to the room to spend more time together. By the time a man opens the door of the room and comes in, he gives both of them together. He gives a gun to Nikki and threatens to kill her. Jess tells Nikki that he is my husband. He is a very crazy person. He has killed many people before. And see this, he will kill you too. But here Nikki is not afraid and neither does he ask to leave him. In fact, he said that please kill me. Because I have cancer anyway, I have to die anyway. So take it, kill you. Now actually Nikki was trying to kill him here. But even on his request, that man did not shoot. That's why Nikki stood up. Then Jess opens her mouth here. That man did not say anything. Hey stupid man, this is not a cancer. In fact, he has understood our plan. Actually, it was all Jess and her partner's plan to trap Nikki and bring her here to the room. Because she used to scare people like this, trap them in her talks and loot them. But this time, her plan failed. Because this time, she faced a bigger robber than herself. Who understood their plan? Yes, Nikki was also a very big, skilled robber. And now, he quietly leaves from there. When Jess was leaving the hotel room, Nikki also starts walking with him. He offers to drink alcohol because Jess was also very impressed with him, so she accepts his offer. They both come to the bar and start drinking alcohol, where Jess starts asking him about the skills of stealing. Jess tells him that the most important thing in this game of robbing and looting is focus. That is, all our attention should be on doing some work. Actually, a person cannot do all the work at the same time. Because such work is bad, it is very important to focus on one thing and focus on the other. After telling all this, he also practices it with Jess. That is, he steals her watch and purse, about which Jess does not even know. He tells her that I was able to steal your things easily because your focus was on me and mine was on you. Seeing this, Jess was also very surprised. She's also impressed with this skill. The next day, she met him again. Jess is very stubborn with him. Then Nikki agrees to tell him how we work in the team. That means he was not alone. Many of his friends also commit thefts with Nikki. So now Jess also becomes a part of his team and comes to a crowded place. Nikki was also standing in front of the balcony and keeping an eye on them. A boy from Nikki's team explains to Jess how we will commit theft. And now these people immediately get busy with their work. Here Nikki and her friends were very surprised to see Jess's skill of stealing. The friends were also happy. That means Nikki thought he was a fool, but he turned out to be very smart. Next, Nikki shows Jess the place where the stolen goods were sold. There was a lot of expensive stolen goods lying here, one of which was a necklace that Jess liked a lot. She picks it up and starts wearing it. Nikki tells him to keep it back. He did not understand. Look, we have not become so rich yet that we can easily live our luxurious life. We only have so much money now that we can survive. We can't even think of buying such expensive things. That means we still need more big thefts. Now Nikki gives him the key to a room and tells him that we have to work together for a long time. So I have bought a room for you in the hotel. Now Jess also insists on coming with him so that he can spend more time together. But he refused that, no, I am busy now. So now Jess comes to the hotel alone with the car. When she was in the room, she was also thinking about Nikki. It felt like she was starting to like him. And then the doorbell rang. When Jess opened the door, there was no one there but Nikki. That means he couldn't stop himself. And these two start spending time together. Now the next day, Jess was talking to a man who was Nikki's friend. He had been working with her for a long time. Both were talking that when Nikki's friend started getting a headache, he started screaming in pain. Actually, all this was Nikki and her friend's plan. People were scared to see her condition. And now, as everyone's focus was on her, 
these people started executing their plan. They started stealing everyone's valuables. After a while, Nikki came there with an ambulance. He takes his friend and Jess in the car and leaves from there. At night, Nikki and all her friends were stealing and partying. Everyone was very happy. Nikki tells them that this time we have achieved our very big target of $1.2 million. One of her friends gives all the money to Nikki and says that it is your responsibility to handle this money. And yes, stay away from gambling. The next day, Nikki and Jess come to the stadium to watch a match. Now when a girl gets up from her seat and starts going from there, Jess makes a bet with Nikki that about eight people will watch this girl go. Nikki says that no, not eight, three people will watch. Now a rich man sitting behind her tells her that according to me, five people will watch her, but only seven people saw her. And because Jess's guess was quite right, she wins this bet. And now Nikki starts betting on the players laying on the ground at the behest of that rich man. But twice, Nikki loses the bet from that man. That's why now Nikki bets on him for 10000 He tells the rich man that whoever tries to catch the ball now will miss the catch. While the rich man says no, he will catch the catch. And now, after a while, a player throws the ball to the other side. So he caught the catch. That means Nikki also lost this bet. So far, Nikki had lost more than $5,000 from that rich man. Seeing this, Jess starts getting worried. She tells Nikki that, let's go from here now. But Nikki, who was very angry, wanted to bet more. And this time he was ready to bet his big $1.2 million. He tells the rich man to bet $1.2 million. We will bet on cards. After which they both came to the casino. And now Nikki puts all the money on the table. All this made Jess very worried. She was still telling Nikki to go from here, but he does not listen to her and challenges the rich man for a bet because that man also had a lot of money. So he also accepts his challenge. But now, unfortunately, Nikki puts it on the table. $1.2 million also loses. Now in this money, Nikki's friends also had a share, but because all the money had gone, Jess's worries started increasing. And now Nikki also started going quietly from here. Then the rich man makes her tense and says that if you play with a big player, it will be like this. Hearing this, Nikki got angry. Also, she remembered something. That's why he started moving towards the rich man again. Says that now, I want to play a double bet of double money. That is, $2.2 million. The surprising thing was that he did not even have a rupee. But still, he was insisting on betting. Nikki tells the rich man that you are playing on the ground. Note the number of any player. And I will tell you by guessing which player you have thought in your mind. But for this, the rich man refused. He says that I do not believe you. Then Nikki started saying that I am not my friend. Jess will tell you about that player. Now by giving so much madness to Nikki, the rich man also agrees. While Jess is still trying to make him understand. After going to the stadium, the rich man had noted the number of a player. Then he comes and tells Jess to go and tell which player I thought in my mind. Then Nikki tells Jess to go out now and just think about the player and tell me. Jess did this. She kept looking at the players for a long time through the door bin, but she does not understand anything. Meanwhile, the rich man tells Nikki that if you want, you can still take this bet back. But he refuses because he wanted to take this risk. And now, after a while, Jess is very surprised to see the player because Nikki's friend was also playing there, who was wearing a t-shirt of number 55. And now Jess says without hesitation, that the number 55 is the player that the rich man has thought. Hearing this, the rich man started laughing like crazy. Says, well done, wow, wow, wow. You guessed right, you have won this bet. Yes, the number 55 was the player. Hearing this, Jess was also very surprised because she could not believe that Nikki has won $2.2 million. And now both of them take all the money and leave from here. In the car, Jess started getting very angry at Nikki she starts hitting her. You have not told me about your plan yet. How did you win such a big amount? Although a while ago, it seemed that because of your anger, you have lost all the money. Now tell me what is the truth. How did you win the bet? Then Nikki tells him that the rich man has a lot of money. Also, he is a very big gambler. He is not such a gambler that he is not played. Jess asks, well, how did you know that I will choose number 55? 
how did you take such a big risk? Then Nikki tells that a long time ago, I was putting something in your mind, along with the rich man's mind. And now such a story comes a little earlier. We saw that Nikki's man had been keeping an eye on the rich man for a long time. He tried in different ways and put number 55 in his mind. Wherever he went, he used to see the shape of number 55 or this number everywhere. People had caught number 55 on the banners here. This was also his move to show the rich man. And today, when he was coming to see the match, he saw Nikki's friend. That's why he put number 55 in his mind, because his number was also 55. This is the reason why he chose this number during the bet. And now, after hearing all this, Jess is very happy. She was impressed again. Nikki tells him that you did a very good job. Saying this, he gives Jess his share of money and leaves from here. Although Jess tries a lot to stop him, but he left without listening to anything. Jess starts crying about this because she started liking Nikki, but Jess feels very bad for her to go like this suddenly. And now from here, the story is shown after three years where Nikki again had to make a plan to rob a rich man. This rich man's name is Gary. He was very fond of keeping toy cars, but to repair the cars, he needed a good mechanic. That's why now Nikki goes to meet Gary by calling herself a good mechanic. When Nikki left from there, Gary's guard says to be careful with him because I don't trust this man at all. But now in the evening, Nikki came to a party where Gary had invited her. There was also Jess in the party who comes close to Gary. Now seeing them so close, Nikki understands that these two have made a relationship. She felt bad. That's why he goes out of the party. He was standing at one place when Jess came here. She says that I have made a relationship with him, but he doesn't know anything about my past. That's why you too, please, don't mention it in front of him by mistake. And now, Nikki comes to the party and drinks a lot because she couldn't bear the fact that Jess is so close to someone else in front of me. Now, Nikki was already very angry. On top of that, he was also very high on alcohol. That's why he hits Gary's face hard. Seeing this, Gary's guard catches him and throws him out of the party. Gary doesn't fire him from the job because he knew that he did this in drunkenness. He forgives Nikki. The next day, when Gary's manager was explaining work to Nikki, he came to the pool near the pool where Gary was also lying. And now, once again, seeing them so close, Nikki started getting jealous. Her focus is on both sides. After meeting the manager, he comes to Jess and tells her that you shouldn't have come here wearing such clothes because some people are looking at you strangely here, which I don't like at all. But Jess ignores his words and leaves from there. The next day, Nikki and Jess meet at a different place. Here Jess asks about the dinner that was going to happen three years ago because she wanted to know why she left Jess suddenly that day. Then Nikki tries to make her understand or try to convince her again, but she doesn't listen to her because she was very angry. So now Nikki tries to convince Jess through her friend because he had also become a very good friend of Jess. Nikki sends the same necklace gift to Jess through her friend, which she had seen at the place of the theft. So now she agrees to meet Nikki on her friend's request. Then when the two meet, Jess understands from Nikki's words that she wants to make a relationship with me again. But Jess refused. She says that she can't trust you this time. Saying this, she leaves from here. Now when Nikki came back to the hotel in sadness, Jess was already sitting at her door. The truth is that she still liked her. That's why she couldn't stop herself from coming here. And now these two come to the room and start spending time together again. Now the next morning, without telling Gary, the guard comes to meet Nikki. He knocks on the door, so Nikki immediately goes and opens the door. Now the guard was suspicious of her. He realized that there is someone else in the room with Nikki. That's why he came to the room and started searching everywhere. But he doesn't find anyone here because Jess went to the balcony to escape from the guard and hid. The next day, Gary's manager gives him a lot of money in return for his work. Now, here we see Nikki transferring something to her laptop, which was actually Gary's secret designs. And now after stealing these designs, he sells them to Nikki and Gary's clients for less money. After which Nikki takes all that money and makes a plan to leave with Jess. And now when they were leaving in both cars, 
then Gary's one man also starts following them from his car. He forcefully brings his car into their car and kills them, which made both of them unconscious. Now, when both of them come to their senses, they see themselves tied up in a chair. Gary was in front of them. Actually, Gary had already known that Nikki had come here with the intention of robbing me. That's why he had already put his men behind Nikki, who was keeping an eye on him day and night. But here, Gary doesn't understand that even after having so much security, how did Nikki get the password? When he asked about this, then Nikki replies that when I saw you so close to Jess, then I also decided to go close to her. I had sent that necklace gift to Jess. I had put a secret chip in it. And when Jess came to your room, then when I came close to the laptop of the chip, I got access to your laptop. That means now I could do anything with your laptop. And in the same way, I got to know your password. But yes, Jess had no idea about this. In fact, I once again pretended to be in love and fooled her. Hearing this, Gary and his guard start laughing loudly. And now, when Gary removes the tape from Jess's mouth, then she also opens her mouth that there was never any relationship between me and Gary. That means she also came with the intention of robbing him, about which Gary got to know. Actually, when Jess came to Gary's party, then she had seen Nikki there. That's why she deliberately started going to Gary's party. Uh, that's why she thought that they were in a relationship. But in fact, there was nothing like that. Now here, Jess starts fighting with Nikki by saying that you are a small deceiver. You never tell the truth. Look at the consequences of your actions. Now we are gonna die. But not listening to her, Nikki starts telling Gary another story on which Gary's guard shoots Nikki saying that now we can't hear another lie about it. After which, the guard moves forward to shoot Jess. Then Gary tells her to stop that I don't want to create a scene of the police here. Stop for a while. And yes, from now on, you will handle this matter. Saying which, he left from here. Nikki was injured. That's why she starts holding her breath. Then the guard came forward quickly. He takes out a bullet from a pump and says that the bullet did not hit the heart. You will be saved. Since then, her dad was working as a guard for Gary so that she can build her trust. With the help of her dad, she found out Gary's password. That is, at that time, Nikki had lied that I did this work through Jess. At Nikki's behest, her dad shot her because if she hadn't done this, Gary would have shot both of them in anger. And now they reach the hospital soon. Her dad and Jess didn't let her in. Now she had already been punished for what she had done. And because Jess was like her, she forgave her and accepted her. And now they will continue to steal with their skills and spend their lives very well. That is, now they will not only have a good life, but they can live a comfortable life, which was the dream of both. And with this, the story of this film also ends here.